Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Much better. Now, first lesson in life that my son actually learned from Salisbury School is that late is on time. I'm sorry, early is on time. And late is not. <laughs> and I think I just scared Mr. Chandler and Reverend Hall to death because I just walked in. But the good news is I was here last night and I actually stood in the sanctuary alone at about 10 o'clock at night. And I stood here looking at this special place that you're in. And by the way, I'm going off script. And I hope you all realize and appreciate what this chapel means and what this school means. And that's a little bit about what I'm going to talk to you today about. So anyway, who am I? I'm Ashley Harrington. Who cares, right? Um, I actually am the mother of Jake Harrington, who graduated in 2009, 10, 13, something like that. 13, class of 13. I'm also the, don't laugh at me. I'm also the aunt of Ian Harrington, who probably most of you know better. Zach, you're laughing at me. Um, he was last year's class. I'm also the sister-in-law of David Harrington, who went here and graduated in class of 81. And I happen to be um, the embarrassing sister of my brother, Dickie Regal, who's also on the board of trustees and is, is a graduate and in the class of 84. Fellow trustees, thank you so much for being here. I bullied you all and I almost missed it. Um, my eighth grade daughter has been critiquing this chapel talk for months and months. When Reverend Hall asked me this summer to do this because I had opened my big mouth a while ago to say I would like to do this, I went, oh, God, really? Um, but I was encouraged by Mr. Chandler, my brother, and lots of other people in this community. So here I stand. But my ninth grade daughter is the most wise of all. She actually is studying to give a TED Talk this year as part of her curriculum. And she said, Mom, whatever you do, don't open up with saying good morning gentlemen and waiting for their response and then chastising them and telling them that their response isn't good enough. Well, I blew it. Um, she said, you have to have a compelling opening sentence. You have to have something that's going to grab the audience. Kind of like a thesis statement that I'm sure you've all learned about or will learn about in your English classes. And she said, and remember, Mom, a talk like this has to be something about something that you're passionate about. And whatever you say, don't be embarrassing. Okay, well, on so many counts, it's already too late. First of all, a parent's job is to embarrass their children. Okay, I'm looking at like 310 young men in this room. How many of you have ever been embarrassed by your parents? <laughs> you can raise your hands. And, and some older men. <laughs> and some older women. So, I'm sure that most of you have been, because that's our role, so I'm going to try to do that. And, I'm, and I just have to say a, a shout out to Zach, Amos, and Dawson. You're dying right now, because I'm sure every day you're in this building and in this school and going, oh, what's my father going to say now? Um, but here I am. Um, it's a lot to endure. So, I also have a couple of other, I've got a new cousin in the room. Gates and a couple of guys I met this summer through other friends. I know Cherry's out there somewhere. I think you guys are probably way in the back. Um, good morning. So, I've blown my opening thesis statement, but I stand before you this morning in this beautiful place, on this amazing, albeit slightly rainy hilltop, because I am truly passionate, as my daughter told me to be, about Salisbury School. I believe in strongly in Salisbury's mission and its education. I've seen firsthand what it can do. And I have to tell you, all of you young men, stay awake with me. You are all lucky to be here. So I greeted you a few minutes ago as gentlemen, 
I could have said good morning students. I could have said good morning boys. But I chose gentlemen. Why? One of the hallmarks of this school is that you are not only expected to be responsible citizens of Salisbury, but also gentlemen of the world. This is a long-standing tradition which has characterized and become the reputation of this school and the graduates. And you're all about to be there. This goes back to my days when I attended Miss Porter's. I think you've probably heard of it. Farmington, Miss Porter's. Back then there weren't a lot of co-ed schools. There were a few. But we had a lot to do, Miss Porter's in those days, with Salisbury. You know, the Deerfield guys were okay. Avon guys were truly questionable. <laughs> Just saying. The Salisbury guys were cool. And they not only were cool, they were incredibly respectful. And coming to this school for dances and mixers and events was really fun. Salisbury was our brother school of choice. And you're going to hear brother and the word brother a lot, not only today, but in the future. But this tradition of being the Salisbury gentleman goes back to even earlier days. If you haven't seen or really looked at the sign on Mr. Chandler's door as you pass into the dining hall, please do so. Honored is a quote from Emerson Quail. How many of you live in Quail? Go on, Hans. Quail. Okay, so this is your back. This is your door. Mr. Quail graduated from Salisbury in 1918. Think about that. That's almost 100 years ago. And some of you in this chapel are graduating in 1918. That's pretty impressive. Emerson Quayle was also headmaster from 1935 to 1942. The sign on Mr. Chandler's door reads, okay, hang in there with me, because it's a little, little tough. The Salisbury Gentleman, a man whose aim is generous, whose truth is constant, and not only constant in its kind, but elevated in its degree. Whose want of meanness makes him simple. Who can look at the world honestly with an equal manly sympathy for the great and the small. Whose thoughts are just, whose life is honest and pure, and whose heart is warm and humble. First of all, thank you, Mr. Corcoran, for taking a picture of that and sending it to me so I actually had the real words because I can never remember it. Nor do I expect you to remember. Mr. Quayle's words are formal and archaic, but his message is clear and it still rings true. So I challenge you guys and your faculty and your teachers to translate Mr. Quayle's words and put them into your vocabulary. Put them into the words that would ring true to you guys today in 2015. What does it mean? Get back to me on that. I'd love to see your interpretation. So yes, being a Salisbury gentleman is an expectation and a legacy that, will take, that you will take with you into the world, but only if you buy in to Salisbury and the Sarum tradition. Now when Reverend Kirk first asked me to talk, I said, oh, I know exactly what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the importance of buying in. Because I know my own son, it took a while, all of you out there that know him, it took a while for him to buy it. And I think he wasted a few years at Salisbury before he really got it, before he figured it out, what it meant to be a Salisbury gentleman and a Salisbury school student. So how does it happen? How do you find that moment? How do you buy it? How do you become really part of this incredible institution and culture? Ultimately, you don't come here necessarily with those skills. It is a learned and modeled characteristic. It's modeled by your faculty. It's modeled by your sixth formers, I hope. Gentlemen. You're all here from different walks of life. 
and for many different reasons. You're here, some of you, for academics. Some of you are here for athletics. I'm looking at Coach Will, and Coach Wynn is here somewhere, and many of the other. There's a big tradition steeped here in, in athletics, but the school is beyond that. Some of you are here for the arts. Some of you are because of what the Brotherhood of Salisbury means and wanting to be part of that. But nevertheless, you are all here. So, at the end of the day, the bottom line, you are all knights. You are all Saren brothers. So this is why, this, so this is when my, and where my mother educator, admissions director hat comes in and all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I haven't been lecturing, I don't think, so far. But my message to all of you is the importance of buying in and making connections. Embrace the opportunities that Salisbury has to offer. Value the time that you have here on the hilltop. Don't take for granted the subtle and not so subtle traditions of your school, and especially the importance of connections with your peers and also your teachers. On the website, as I was browsing the other day, is a quote from Duncan Morris. Many of you know Duncan. He was here last year. He was class president. When asked what his advice would be to a new student, or to any Salisbury student, he said, no matter how you're feeling coming in, just make the most of everything Salisbury has to offer. Don't leave this place wishing you did something you didn't get around to doing. I was stunned by that because that's exactly what my message is, and that was echoed by one of your own peers, a knight amongst you. And there are so many events and traditions for you to be part of. So again, embrace them. The leadership initiative here is meaningful. There are certain words that are thrown around. Learn them, know them. Loyalty, respect, pride, integrity, and honor. These are the core of who all of you are. I actually asked that we could sing the Sarum hymn at the end of this chapel service, so again, sorry guys, buy in and sing it. But those words are steeped within that hymn. And it's a part of who you are. And even though I'm female, it's who I am. I feel like a brother of Salisbury as well because of all my interactions here and with the people that I know. So also the word of the year. Every year the class president gets to choose, choose a word. That's kind of a cool thing. This year it's tenacity. Trust me, you're going to need that word. Because they're not going to be easy days. There are going to be times when you have to really embrace what that means. And there are going to be days when you don't want to be tenacious anymore. But you guys chose that word. Live by it. But there are things that you'll remember looking back, because as all Salisbury gentlemen do, at one point when they're away from being here, when they're away from five days, six days of classes, and they're on to college, and they're out of college, then they're in a job, and they have a family, and trust me, you all will do that. There's certain things that you'll remember and you'll smile about. The red light in the cupola. What does that mean? Well, that means we just got a great victory. The sit-down formal meals might seem dreary and a pain in the neck. Enjoy them. Embrace them. The senior faculty softball game, always a fun event. And what's sort of new to the school, which I think will take off and, and, and be around for a long time, is the friendly competition between the Saxons, the Romans, the Normans, and the Vikings. And those are family lines. My brother and I are, are, are both Normans. Do you remember that, Nikki? <laughs> anyway. Community service opportunities are important. Being a big brother, giving blood, the recognition of that's a knight, and that's not an N-I-G-H-T. You know, think about these chapel talks 
and the fact that a lot of you guys are going to be standing up here this year. It's not easy, especially if you come in late. Singing the Serum Hymn when the Headmaster Holiday is announced? Kind of cool. One of my favorite moments was when, uh, before my son even came here, and we were at Berkshire, it was in their old rink, and it was one of the final games um, of the championships between Berkshire and Salisbury for the big deal. And all of the Sarah brothers were there in this tin box of a rink, banging on the walls, and suddenly they started singing the Sarum hymn. Are you kidding me? Who else does that? It was one of the most significant moments in my Salisbury history. And my son came here the following year. The hanging of the greens. My son used to go, oh, God, Mom, we've got to do the hanging of the greens. No, it's really cool. It's really cool. Embrace it. Look at it. Understand what it means. Lessons and carols, the same way. The first snow. I know that it's always fun when there's the first snow. And then there was last year when there was snow, and there was snow, and there was snow, and there was more snow, and then it got tiring. Um, have fun at feeling in your downtime. Anyway, one of the most important things is graduation. And young men in the front, young gentlemen in the front, that's in your grasp. You have this coming to you in eight months. And it is an amazing feeling as a parent, as a mother, watching your son amongst his brothers stand up there in the blue blazer with the crest and watching Mrs. Chandler pin that iconic rose to your lapel and the pride that you each have in each other and what we have in you as well and what your faculty has in you. <coughs> and I'm going to take a little, little step back for a second because one of the really, really cool things that I experienced with my son um, was thanks to Mr. Simmons. Um, and I don't know if you all still do it, and if you don't, I implore the faculty to get this started again. But it used to be a tradition that third formers in their first few weeks, third formers in their first few weeks here actually wrote a letter to themselves that was kept sealed in an envelope, never read, until graduation day. So in the morning of graduation day, the, fourth, the six formers who were four-year boys, gentlemen, were called together on the steps, the senior steps, for a picture. It's actually in the yearbook. And before that, Mr. Simmons got up in front of them and said, congratulations, gentlemen, you made it. Some of your class didn't. And I'd like to read a list and hand you these envelopes that you wrote to yourself four years ago. <clears throat> he's going to kill me. Oh my God, he's going to kill me. I have my sons. Notice the envelope. Notice the handwriting. Notice how delicately it was opened by him on graduation morning. It's typically not a woman that would open it that way. Look at the paper. Look at the perforations. This is pulled right out of one of your spiral notebooks. I'm going to read it. Please, God, don't anyone tell him this. Dear Jake, oh yeah, that's me. This day has finally come. You're graduating and you didn't get kicked out. <laughs> right now, while I'm currently writing this, it is my 10th day of classes and Salisbury School. Life is going well and everything. By the time you read this, you should be a tri-varsity athlete and on your way to a great college. And my roommate is all right, but he kind of gets annoying. His name is Nick Turakama or something like that. 
By the way, Nick was class president in 2013. <laughs> Annoying, I'm sure. Hopefully Natalie got into a really good boarding school and Elsie is doing well in hockey. She rocks. The new rink is about to be done. I haven't seen it, but it looks pretty dope. A lot of construction is getting on, but it's going to be sick. I have to go bomb a test now, so I need to go study. Peace. Jay Carrington. <laughs> P.S. Punch George when you read this, because he is being so annoying right now. George didn't graduate. Anyway, I have gone on too long already. Mr. Ruskin, have I kept you awake? Oh my gosh, he's awake. I promised you last night. All right, honey. <laughs> Buy in, embrace your time here. Learn what it is to be a Salisbury gentleman and take it out into the world with you. And never, ever, ever forget the importance of brotherhood. That is uniquely Salisbury. <laughs>